cannabis connection in the house. For Tony Boys of the Building. For the Extreme Retro Review for ECW, February 8th, 1997. Ladies and germs, I must announce and proclaim that this is Extreme Retro Review number 250. Viva la raza! That's what I'm talking about, 250. And as always, on the 50 count, I challenge you at Extreme Retro Review number 300 to a game of trivia. Stay tuned for Extreme Retro Review number 275 when when the category will be announced. As the former... Trivia champion, and as the current pay per view prediction champion, I humbly accept your challenge and I cannot wait to see what you have in store for me at 275. See you there. 57 minutes, 27 seconds for those of you who have the coveted, the coveted, illustrious, and highly elusive tape trader edition of this show to my man on the right of me who is a fellow podcast journalist and my fellow partner in crime he watches this show via the wwe network for 9.99 getting worked at your own convenience <laughs> What was the time and your thoughts and views of this episode of Hardcore Television? Before I get into all that, you know what is also um, elusive and highly coveted? That would be a bottle of Walgreens vodka by an alcoholic who can't get to a liquor store. And that's all that they could get. Whereas the WWE Network is the Mysterio of drinks. The top of the mountain. The best of the best. I mean, you can enjoy your Walgreens vodka. The one with the three X's on the front that just says vodka. That's your tape trader, you know what I'm saying? Hey, drink at your own risk. That's fine. Or you can treat yourself. You can get a taste of the finer things, of the good life. And pour you a cup of Mysterio. Turn on some WWE Network and tune in to what would be the February 4th, 1997 edition of this show for 47 minutes and 34 seconds and get to relive some of the highlights from Crossing the Line again on the WWE Network. My thoughts, as I said, it's clips from Crossing the Line again. If you liked it. Why not go ahead and check it all over again? Me, myself, personally, I would recommend that you just skip to the end of the show because the first half of the show uh, was pretty shitty. Uh, I I did like the part with anything with Stevie Richards. It's LOL for me. But if you're not a big fan of Stevie, skip to the end for the historical moment and save yourself the trouble. So we start with a cold open replay of Paul E.'s announcement of the pay-per-view main event on April 13th, 1997, consisting of That Man Taz versus That Man Sabu. And we go into the bizarro theme, which is King Nothing by Metallica. We come back with Joey Styles at the Eagle's Nest making the call for Barely Legal on April 13th, 1997. Moving on. (laughs) Attention to all you super virgins. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't wasn't ready for that. I might have to get the tape trader if that's on there. (laughs) You will be able to get Barely Legal tickets a full week before tickets go on sale. So join Club ECW. We also have bumpers for February 7th, February 8th, and it will feature a six-man rematch from Crossing the Line Again, recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 249. You're welcome. That was last week. And here's a triple threat promo. Shane Douglas says, if you play any sport... 
you must be a champion. Come on, somebody. In wrestling, you must leave your mark. Putts and the puppies want to leave their mark on the greatest three-man tag team of all time and the sweetest girl there is. 60 years ago, Jesse Owens left his mark because he was the greatest of all time. That's right. They'll talk about him from then on. The triple threat don't want to be talked about by the ECW Arena Mutants. <laughs> they want to be regarded the world over by everyone for centuries to come. I know that's right. The undead bulldozer and real American badass got his back. <laughs> and so does Cut Candido, who plays cleanup. <laughs> No gimmicks needed. Gary put, Gary gets put on the shelf, <coughs> and when he comes back, the first thing he does is try to break the franchise's neck. How disrespect. Nobody cared when I broke my neck. Nobody cared. When you break your neck, you get paralysis from the neck down. Nothing works down there. Look what I go home to. Look what I go home to. You break Shane's neck, look what he goes home to. When I get my hands on you, Shane finishes... It'll be no more than Mr. Nice Guy. HW, your thoughts of the promo? Um, my thoughts. The you know I give I give Cuck a, a, a hard time and shit. You know what I'm saying? But the Pause. triple threat looks good on him. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's a good fit for the triple threat, but the triple threat is a good fit for him. If that makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. Because I give two shits about him by himself. <laughs> but when he's a part of that unit. He it, it bolsters him up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's good, solid shit. Joey runs down the card for tonight, which is basically crossing the line again clip show. And he throws it to a replay of Stevie Richards versus Ricky Morton. Moving on. <laughs> we have bumpers for the BWO t-shirt. And on February 11th in Mana Yunk, the Varsity Club presents the first annual Celebrity Bartenders Night, shaking my head, featuring local celebrities and the Sandman and alumni from the Philadelphia Flyers. Hold on, wait a minute. And the Eagles. Mike Rotunda and Scott Steiner is hosting this shit. It will be from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. And we also have bumpers for February 7th and February 8th. Move it. <laughs> Wonder how many real niggas out there got my varsity club reference and shit. We have a franchise and Francine promo. Franchise is upset that people's opinion have changed and soured since returning to ECW <laughs> at House Party 1996, recounted by us, Extreme Rest Review number 169. You're welcome. Before his reputation was impeccable. And his word was treated as gospel. Now he's the guy that broke Gary's neck. <laughs> Joey doesn't talk about how seconds before they super bombed Francine. I love this bitch because as he's giving that promo, he she's, she starts looking down all forlorn and shit. Yeah, you know. She was abused, I understand. They talk badly about franchise shaking Gary up. <laughs> Giving him the halo toss and stipomania recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 223. Oh, you're welcome, and he deserved it. But he got into the ring with a competitor. That's not his fault. So since you tried to break my neck, it's going to be sweet to see you roll up to the ECW arena permanently. <laughs> like Christopher Reeve. H-Dub, talk to me. I loved every bit of it until... He had to, I went way too far with Christopher Reeve because I was eating that shit out of Shane's hand and shit. And him being the super heel, he managed he managed to get even his number one fan to be like, hey, what the fuck? Because if anybody who knows me knows that Superman is my favorite hero, I'm Superman. Christopher Reeve is the greatest Superman actor of all time. Rest in peace. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And he, and he, I couldn't even gimmick it that with a shit. But, um, and everyone knows before he passed away, he ended up in a wheelchair after getting thrown off from a horse and shit. So, um, just Shane, just keep it classy, player. That's all I say is keep it classy, but great, awesome. But at the same time, taking off my Superman fan hat and shit, it's 
awesome, awesome heel promo. Fucking awesome. You watch South Park? Uh, I used to. I don't watch. You never seen the episode where Christopher Reeve was uh, eating stem cells from babies, <laughs> or was that Family Guy? No, it was Family Guy. Uh, was it? I can't remember. Uh, Fuck it. Thank God for Post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people, don't leave me hang. Well, I guess that's the long and the short. Christopher Reeve was trying to walk again by eating stem cells. Uh, oh, I ain't that's that's. <sighs> this all right? You you know what? Sometimes all right. I did call the funks of. Um, is there enough, enough shit? I'm thank God for posts. I guess you have to edit that out. We come back with Dr. Death coming to the ring, and I'm assuming this is how we get to Raven, Dr. Death. But we start with a replay of Dr. Death versus Axel Rotten. Oh, yeah, the road to Raven goes, uh, it goes through Axel Rotten and shit. We have an eliminators promo. Saturn says that the three way dance is a good opportunity for them to get two teams at the same time. Total elimination. Total elimination. Total elimination. Sign me up. I'm there. Their heel promos were better. Moving on. <laughs> what? Are they not heels anymore? It's looking like they're turning. Oh, it's, come it's, on. It's looking like they're turning. We have a February 7th, February 8th bumper moving on. And on the hardcore hotline this week, Ooh. things that you didn't see on Monday Night Raw. Two people being recruited by the Nation of Domination. Who is the newest member of the New World Order? And some ravishing revelations about the masked man. All for $1.99 per minute. That's some thirsty shit to be um, trying to sell other niggas news and shit. Fuck that shit. (laughs) We have a February 8th bumper and another shield for the bartender's night. <laughs> oh, Curtis. <Moving> on. <laughs> Cur- courtesy of the varsity. We have a replay of the same shit again. How did we get here? Raven and Doc with the BWO messiness recounted by us. Extreme Retro Review number 249. You're welcome. We come back with another bland baby face-ish Eliminators segment featuring them hyping up the match against RVD and Sabu. And we have a February 8th bumper. Move on. We have a Raven t-shirt spot. Move on. We have an extreme replay of Raven and Doc. How much did Paul pay for him to do the job in North America for the first time in 10 years? I would love to know. We have a spot for Extreme Warfare Volume 2. Recounted by us, Extreme Retro Review, number 243. You're welcome. Jury reminds you on April 13th, 1997, it's barely legal. ECW's first pay-per-view featuring the main event of Taz versus Sabu. But CyberSlam is February 21st and 22nd, coming from the Elks Lodge in Queens, New York, and the ECW Arena, respectively. We have a club ECW re-up for you super losers. <laughs> and a February 7th and February 8th bumper. Moving on. We end with a replay of Devon versus Sandman with the Bubba Ray heel turn and the gangsters save and get beat up. <laughs> Overall, crossing the line again. For a third time, because this was a motherfucking clip show. But I did enjoy the review, (laughs) so I will give this a thumbs up. (laughs) Oh, nice. Look at the food for the generous this week. (laughs) Next week. Next week. Steam rolling towards the first pay-per-view. The second on its triple shots, we have the February 15th, 1997 show. We out. Peace. Peace. Peace.